to talk about uncovering the pseudo subclonal structure of tumor samples with copy number variation of next generation sequencing data. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> Uh, first, I'd first like to thank the organizer for granting me such a wonderful opportunity to share with you some of the work I have been doing uh, after I joined Gabor Marth Lab as their new graduate student. And um, as you know, probably all pretty much aware of, uh, tumor sample is always going to be mixed with a certain amount, uh, the surrounding normals. And uh, if you sequence the sample, it is, um, it is going, the, the sequencing grid is going to be a mixture of the, the, the DNA sample from both the tumor and normal. <clears throat> and um, we really started to, um, this, this project to look at um, the uh, admixture ratio of normal in any uh, sequencing data uh, by looking at the copy number uh, information from what you can gain from the BAM, BAM file, which is pretty straightforward to do. Um, you can count the red depths uh, in a, um, for example, uh, in this specific example, it is a 10 KB moving window of the um, uh, tumor BAM file. Also, uh, you can count the same thing with the pair normal. And if you do, if you calculate the ratio between the tumor and the normal read depths, then the ratio is going to capture the somatic copy number variant that is happening in the, uh, in the tumor sample. And if you plot a histogram of the ratio, then uh, if you assume that the sample which is being called as tumor is a pure a homo a homogeneous uh, sample with a, some kind of deletion events, a heterozygous deletion events, then you would expect that um, aside from the large peak around one where it corresponds to copy number neutral event, you would expect a peak around 0 0.5 uh, which corresponds to the uh, heterozygous deletion event. However, what is imp interesting is that we actually observed the, 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 the peak at 0 0.7, which means the peak has been pushed towards where the copy number neutral uh, ratio w resides. And uh, since cell cannot really have non-integer level of copy number, the way to interpret this is to think of the original sample being a mixture of both a tumor clone and the, the contaminating normal clone. And, um, based on a simple linear combination can actually solve for the uh, contamination ratio in this case. Uh, uh, for example, the, the contamination ratio, the, the, the tumor pu uh, purity is 80%. That will shift the line up as what is observing in this case. And um, um, if you locate the peak and uh, identify where the copy number two and the copy number one, which shows as the black and the blue line in this uh, slides, you can actually calculate the, uh, the, the contamination ratio and use that ratio again and the um, copy number neutral line location. You can actually predict where the copy number three and the four in, the, uh, in this example that in this tumor that will uh, appear in this histogram. And that fits the data extremely well. If you overlay these lines uh, with the uh, uh, ratio plot versus the chromosome location, you can see that these lines are perfectly ex explaining some of the segments that you're observing here. So we were really excited about the results and uh, we applied the same technique to all the other chromosomes from the same sample. This is only chromosome 19 of a specific TCG sample. Uh, we observed something quite odd. Um, different chromosomes show up to have different tumor purity and that they tend to cluster together with very high differences among clusters but very small differences within a cluster. Now, this can't happen because you can only mix cells at a cellular level. How come different chromosomes have different con contamination ratios unless there is more than one subclone that has been found, that exists in the tumor subclone? And there exists a hierarchical, uh, that, that's where the tumor heterogeneity comes in. We, um, model this as a hierarchical subclone structure where the most prevalent uh, mutation should appear uh, in all the tumor, that, uh, uh, deemed as tumor cells, uh, which leaves out, like for example, 20%, which would be the, uh, the, the normal contamination. But the, um, the, the less represented mutation will exist in a subset of the tumor subclone. And, um, 
at those locations where the cells don't have that minor uh, uh, mutation will act as if they were normal, and that is why you're observing different tum uh, tumor purity at different chromosomes. And the same way applies for the even minor uh, copy number. And um, so this is a, this is a, a we, we, we saw if we are able to reconstruct the entire structure algorithmically, and the, the way actually uh, we come up with a way which is as good following, which is to look for the, to, to, to approach this um, problem from bottom up to look for the most diverged subclone in this cell first, and then make your way up uh, onto you. So for example, if you have, if you have a um, ratio, uh, you have observed the ratio data, which uh, shows like the one that in the, um, uh, with the uh, white lines, then you can initialize a model which consists of only normal uh, genotype, which is uh, presumably 100% of copy number two. And assuming that this is your tumor sample, you can actually predict where the ratio would be. And uh, granted, that is going to be one all over the place. And uh, you can then calculate the differences among the model, uh, between the model and the actual data. And uh, you can come up with numbers that represents the contamination ratio. In this case, they are, they're different from each other. So what you would do is that you break the uh, normal sub uh, your normal clone into two subclones, and uh, the uh, right leaf is going still to represent the, uh, the the normal subclone, but the left leaf is going to contain the mutations, which is uh, snapped at an integer number to uh, explain the differences that you observed in the. Uh, in, uh, in, the two, in the actual data, and with also with the corresponding uh, tumor purity. Uh, one thing to notice that the uh, most diverged cell will also have the, um, will, will, will have both the more prevalent and the less prevalent uh, mutations. So when you, initial, when, when, when you initialize the uh, copy number profile, of the tumor of this so, uh, of the smaller tumor sample, you have to count in for all the differences that you've seen here. But and uh, with this model, you can then update your, your your predicted value. And as you can see, one of the segment is going to be explained perfectly. But that and you can update the number and uh, pretty much do the same thing again. But next time you break, you always break the numer uh, the, the, the normal subclone to count to to count for the the part that has not yet been explained. In the uh, well, uh, until your 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 data can fit your model well, uh, we can we can actually devise a score here, which is pretty much the sum of the absolute value of the differences between the normal uh, between the model and the actual data. And uh, this entire thing is iterated over and over again until the score does not improve anymore. And uh, if you backtrace the uh, the leaf nodes, that is exactly what you have seen in my previous slides, which is the structure that we learn from these algorithms. However, it is important to keep in mind that given one ratio data, there is always, uh, there, there, there is the chances that there are more than one actual biological structure that corresponds to the same ratio uh, observation you have. For example, the model on the left and the model on the right. Um, we don't think that it is possible to distinguish between these two models based on the copy number ratio data alone. So we, uh, the algorithm choose to produce the model on the right uh, just because it is a, um, uh, we believe it is a better um, representation of the actual biological process. And as many of you who talked to me yesterday during the post session have mentioned, this looks strikingly like what we expect when there is a cancer stem cell that they sort of aggregate mutations themselves, but along the way they produce cells that constitute the entire tumor. And um, that's pretty much the method with these um, uh, simulations. If you start with a 40% normal and a 60% tumor uh, mixture uh, uh, profile with uh, the um, copy number profile as shown here in the tumor sample, uh, the, the method is able to predict 42% of normal and 58% of tumor, which is fairly close. And uh, we have incorporated a small error term in there that counts for uh, the, uh, the error that you observed in the uh, actual sequencing data. So that's why the number is a little bit off. But um, 
all in all, it's uh, doing a pretty good job. If you change the, uh, the simulation profile to include an, a, a third uh, tumor uh, subclone, the, the result is uh, comparable, like 20% of a subclone and 57% uh, of the other subclone, whereas you have 23% uh, of the normal. And we apply the, the method to some actual TCGA data. This is the, uh, the result that the algorithm comes up uh, from the data that I showed you earlier from the uh, chromosome pile up figure. And it looks pretty close to the one that we come up by hand. In the, this is specifically a ovarian cancer. Um, this is another example shown uh, with uh, a glio glioblastoma uh, cancer, and you can see that there are much higher heterogeneity compared to ovarian cancer. And um, there are some, a bunch of other more examples uh, on glioblastoma cancer. Um, so just give you a, a taste of how the, uh, the, the program looks like. Uh, so if you zoom in, the part that the actual result is, the, the, if, I don't know if you can see, but the purple line actually represents the uh, observe, ob observe uh, ratio value subject to genome segmentation. And uh, so that's pretty much um, representing the stomatic copy number events in your sample. And the green line, which dark green line, is what the final model is predicting, and they look pretty close. Uh, there are even segments where you only see uh, green lines, that doesn't mean the green lines perfectly overlapping with the, the purple line. And um, yes, in conclusion, uh, the, the method is able to simultaneously produce and uh, simultaneously estimate both the normal cell contamination ratio and uh, some uh, measurement over the tumor heterogeneity, I think both of which will be very important for any downstream analysis. And uh, the algorithm is pretty fast. It uh, in the worst case scenario, if you have as many uh, different copy number states as the number of chromosome locations you investigated, then at the most you will need those number of iterations to explain the entire data. The actual speed limiting step is counting the read depths. It takes roughly one day and a half to count the read depths of a uh, whole genome sequencing data with 40 uh, times um, medium coverage and takes roughly two minutes to come up with the uh, subclone structure. And uh, it can be, the, the, the information can be used as a prior for any downstream analysis. For example, if you know that there are a certain percentage of normal contamination, you, it, you might require less evidence to call a variant in your tumor sample. In the, the method is actually uh, designed to be independent of the CNV caller. I, in this case, I implemented my own very rudimentary, simple CNV caller, but if you have your favorite CNV caller, you can just plug it in, and it takes the input as the segmented genome. And the, the model it produced is, uh, is a biologically motivated model, but uh, there are definitely other possibilities that um, it represents a, a class of possible combinations based on copy number data alone. So which brings us to the future directions that we want to be able to, I didn't say here, but it might be helpful to incorporate sequence data to try to differentiate between the case where you have non-overlapping mutations and overlapping mutations. And um, well, another thing that we want to do is do validation. Since we are a bioinformatics lab, we are actually looking for, looking for collaboration uh, with um, web groups to, um, to do some uh, validation work. And uh, the current examples that I showed up there was uh, tested on whole genome sequencing data. And the next way was on to test and uh, probably make modifications to make these algorithms work with captured data. And uh, yep, I'd like to thank uh, everybody in the lab. I'm pretty new to this lab and everybody has showed tremendous amount of support for my work. And I'd also like to thank TCJ for this opportunity to both uh, getting my hands on some excellent data and the opportunity to pre also pr present my work to the community. Thank you. Questions? Uh, I'll start out with one question. Uh, very exciting, very nice uh, work. Uh, how are we going to cope with representing the uncertainty? You, you gave a good example where there were a couple of different interpretations yes. of the data, and I think we're, we're struggling with that at Santa Cruz as we do similar work. Uh, we don't want to present one machine solution as the, the absolute truth when we're, sure, when we're actually quite uncertain 
as to what the, how the data should actually be interpreted. Do, do you have any thoughts well, on how I to... Well, I sort uh, of think about that, for example, uh, okay, given the example when I was sort of breaking... Go, the, uh, okay, so I was sort of um, breaking the tree structure, and yeah. uh, most of the time, uh, it is uh, going to be different ways to break the left node and the right node with equally the same you know, goodness of uh, explaining the data. And I think, I've, I, I, um, I, I think there might actually not be a way to differentiate which one is correct right. based on the uh, um, uh, copy number data alone. Absolutely, we will, that's the point. We yeah. will have uncertain situations where there's no one solution that we're confident in. There could be other equally good solutions. So yeah. how can we communicate to the, the biological community that fact? Um, we should um, first of all make that aware, uh, aware yes. unknown thing. And then <laughs> most of the time, I don't think that is going to matter. For example, it might be equivalent if, um, for example, a, a location where there is a, ho a homozygous deletion, uh, yes. but only 50% of the cell has that versus a heterozygous uh, deletion where all the cells have that. If you break the uh, genome into pieces and do whatever uh, the, the, the sequencing technology that we do nowadays, then there might not be a difference at a DNA level. Right, but there's a very important difference at a biological level, yes, and so yes. we need to know that. Yeah, we data. might need okay. to incorporate other data then. All right, so it's an issue. Um, any other questions? Yeah, so actually, I have a sort of related question to David. So that basically means uh, there's an alternative scenario, but suppose there's only one scenario. Do you thought we are also pre give the confidence interval for for the percentage of different tumors? Yes, um, that is actually the things that I actually want to work on. Currently, it is based on a linear model, but uh, it might need to be changed to uh, incorporate a statistical um, solutions. For example, what is the percentage of that? Uh, it, I think it is more, uh, well, the, the confidence is, um, more is going to play more in terms of determining the actual integer uh, number of the copy number in a sub uh, in, a, in, in a sub clone versus um, you know it's going to play less than actual ratio. So I guess that's where the um, confidence is going to play an important role there. Okay, let's thank you again.